Good afternoon and welcome to the Wits University Faculty of Health Sciences virtual open day class of 2021. We are delighted that you have joined us. These are surreal times, um, but we're excited to engage with you on a virtual platform. Today's program is really a show and tell and an answer experience. We will sh show and tell you what the faculty has to offer and you will be able to pose questions to our panelists who come from all the core service departments that are pertinent to your entry to the university. Kindly note that due to load shedding, the video and audio feed um, may become intermittent for some in the audience. This is unfortunately beyond our control, but we do apologize for this. I now welcome our Vice Chancellor, Professor Adam Habib, followed by the Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, Professor Martin Vela, to address you. Students, prospective Vitsis, I hope you are well and keeping safe. We live in surreal times. I truly would not have expected to come to you in an online format and via video. But we live in these circumstances. And while I might complain, I'm sure it's much more difficult for each one of you. This is one of your momentous years. You would have loved to have the opportunity to have a metric dance. You would have loved to spend your last year with many more, with many of your friends and fellow students. But unfortunately, you too have to operate in these stressful conditions in an online format. Because, you know, in a lot of ways, this is a foretaste of things to come. And all of our challenges in this world are going to be transnational challenges. Whether we're talking about climate change, whether we're talking about public health and pandemics like the one we're going through, whether we talk about inequality or political and social polarization, each one of those challenges are transnational. And what we're going to need is great science and an understanding of context. We're going to need great technology, but we need to cohere as a human community if we are going to succeed in addressing those challenges. And truly, that's why I want you to think about coming to WITS, because WITS is one of those really great institutions that captures the world, that builds, if you like, the bridges of solidarity. It is an institution beyond race, beyond class, beyond gender, beyond culture. It brings people from all of South African society and from all of the world together. It is both cosmopolitan and demographically representative. And that's important if we are going to build the bridges of human solidarity. Just think about it. In this pandemic, where are the clinical trials happening? In this pandemic, where is the debates on economic policy happening? In this pandemic, which institution is preparing the kinds of protective equipment for our frontline workers? We at the forefront of addressing the challenges of this pandemic. And the reason we can do it is because we do great science, we produce great technology, we produce great graduates, but simultaneously, we represent all of South African society. Are we political? Yes. But how can you not be political in this world? If we are going to address the challenges of our time, we need to be both political, but we need to be socially grounded. We need to be economically literate. We need to be scientifically grounded. And we need to be technologically adept. We need to bring world-class science and local understanding in one cohesive, coherent package. So I like to wish you all the luck in these exams. Think of it as an entrance to WITS, because actually, not only will WITS do great things for you, it will enskill you to transform our world. So all the luck, and I look forward to seeing you at WITS in 2021. 
Good afternoon and a warm welcome to the Faculty of Health Sciences Focus Day. I am Martin Vella, the Dean of the Faculty. Who would have thought that this Focus Day, usually our highlight in the university's calendar, would need to become an online event and that all South Africans would be living in such difficult times, experiencing a pandemic that has changed the world we know forever. This experience is surreal, with a way of life that none of us expected and that none of us would have wished for ourselves or for South Africa's communities. The COVID-19 pandemic has not only added to the already substantial health burdens experienced in Africa, it has also had an enormous socioeconomic impact that will result in worsening levels of poverty. This is the scourge we all must work at eradicating so that everybody has an opportunity to live their life to the fullest. It is this goal that informs our faculty's mission to be relevant and responsive to the health needs of the communities we serve, precisely because this results in a more equitable society. Indeed, it is well established that good health and wealth are linked. With improved health being deeply embedded in the fabric of social justice, our vision is to teach, practice and investigate in the health sciences to realize a healthy society. We want to lead and create an era with new possibilities where good health is the norm. We aim to reach this goal by attracting the best students who have the will, passion and aptitude to contribute to these ideals. Those who are accepted for study in our faculty will be taught by a highly engaged academy with a strong international reputation who all believe that health is not just a privilege but a human right and central to an individual's dignity. In recent times, our clinicians and researchers have brought their considerable knowledge, expertise and experience to bear in many fields challenging our country and region, such as in the management of the COVID-19 and HIV pandemics, in the treatment of cancers, and in the understanding of human genetics on the African continent to find new treatments, new drugs, and new understanding of the human and the conditions that make them ill. As a consequence of this academy, the Faculty of Health Sciences is ranked 77th in the world by the Times Higher Education World Subject Rankings for clinical, preclinical and health subjects. We would be honored to welcome you to our faculty for the 2021 academic year, to join our community and to help shape the future of healthcare and thereby the well-being of all in this country. Good luck with the completion of your studies and with the forthcoming examinations. Make every thought serve you and every effort to push you forward. Believe in the fact that you can and that you are almost there. Good luck and let's see you here at WITS in 2021. and clinics to assist by performing routine procedures such as such as suturing, wound dressing, performing minor procedures, administering medication, doing pap smears as well as assisting in major surgeries.
Welcome again. I didn't introduce myself earlier, so let me do so now. I'm Jerome September, and I am the Dean of Student Affairs here at the University of the Witwatersrand. Um, just a couple of housekeeping um, rules. We will now go into a question and answer session. On your Zoom screen, there are two platforms to ask questions. Please use the question and answer chat room only and not the chat room. I think I've already seen some of your questions coming through in the chat room, but if you could please use the question and answer chat room only. Um, I will now look at, at those questions and please don't worry if we didn't get to, to your specific question, we will make a plan to come back to you during the course of the week to answer all of, of, of the outstanding questions that there might be. So the first question is really around um, the reputation of the faculty. And I now ask um, the Dean of the Faculty, Professor Vela, to just give us a sense of the ranking of the faculty. I think it was mentioned in, in the video, but, but Prof Vela, if you can just give us a sense of that, please. Good afternoon, Jerome, and welcome to all the participants in our um, focus day. Um, the Faculty of Health Sciences has in recent years been um, rising up in the rankings quite substantially and currently in the Times Higher Education um, system of ranking for clinical and preclinical years is ranked 77th in the world. Most of the other ranking systems um, which are you know, which the university subscribes to we are generally in the top 200 um, in the world Generally, we're very proud to be in that kind of position, certainly amongst the first or second in the African continent at any, at any one time. Thank you. Wow, so a highly rated faculty, um, not just on the continent, but, but indeed also in, in the world. We, we are also, of course, in the period of the 4IR. And so I would like to ask um, the head of school uh, for, for therapeutic sciences, Dr. Paula, Barnard Ashton, if she could possibly give us a sense of how prepared we are uh, for the 4IR. Thank you, Mr. S September, for the uh, question. Unfortunately, Dr. Barnard Ashton couldn't be with us today, uh, and she'd asked me just to, to send through this message in her right. case. So the Wits Faculty of Health Science is a leader in biotechnology and in nanotechnology in South Africa. And to prepare our graduates for their future in healthcare, we incorporate a number of different skills into our curricula, including information science, evidence-based practice, critical thinking, problem solving, and importantly, systems thinking. Mm -hmm. These skills allow our graduates to use 4IR tools to improve their practice. In our uh, teaching methodologies, we incorporate technology, simulation, and blending blended learning methodologies, which will foster 21st century learning skills. And this helps to create professionals who are lifelong learners and can adapt to the environments they find themselves in. Most importantly for us, we're very aware that while 4IR is important for the future of healthcare, our graduates have to be equipped to respond to South African healthcare challenges. So all of our programs have a strong focus on developing interpersonal collaborative communication and clinical skills, which include 4IR technology, such as decision tools and guideline apps. And this approach equips our students with skills, knowledge, design thinking, and innovative mindsets that allow them to make a difference in South Africa while becoming world leaders in their chosen field. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So I see a lot of questions coming through around admissions, around the points that's required, around the NBT and community service and what we look at. So Professor Vela, back to you again. <laughs> What, what, are the, what are the other aspects or what aspects are considered for admission? So is it the NBTs? Is it community service? Is it sports? Are there quotas? What do we look at? Thank you, Jerome. So the only things that we're going to be looking at for entry into the faculty in 2021 um, will be the matric results. And in fact, specifically the matric results in five subjects and what those subjects are is available on our website. But what we do do is, is that we do have specific 
um, sections of our selection for particular groupings. And what we do is, is that we reserve 20% of the positions that are available um, for um, study in medicine and in the faculty across, in general in the faculty, for students who have um, studied in quintile one, two, and three schools, a further 20% for students who have studied in rural schools. Then we reserve 20% for black and colored students and finally, the rest, the other 40% is available to all um, academically high performing students. So I see then just following on that um, also a question around um, how many places are available for, for medicine? Will this be increasing the numbers due to, to, to COVID? And so, yeah, I'm asking um, Prof. Dania Ballard to please come in. She's head of school for clinical medicine. If you, you could please come in, how many places are available? Will we be increasing numbers next year? Prof Ballard? Um, can you hear me? I'm trying to, yes. I'm, I'm trying to find out to we can hear uh, you. We can put hear my you. video on. Sorry, I don't know how to do that. Okay, <laughs> so we've got two, two routes into um, the MBBCH program. The first is school leavers and in first year MBBCH1 we have 220 places. But if you're not successful in getting in in, in first year, you would then study either a Bachelor of Health Sciences or a, a BSc. And once you have completed your degree, you have another opportunity for entering the so-called Graduate Entry Medical Program, which is essentially MBBCH3. So we have the two streams in our um, medical program. And um, uh, the current GIMP1 class has got 380 students. Um, we are hoping um, in future years to be able to increase the number of places but at the moment, we will not be able to accommodate any more students um, at this time. And, and, and so, Prof, while I have you on the platform, I see a question related to GEM. H how do I get in? So if, if I am interested in, in that stream, how do I get in? So basically, for, to be a graduate entrant, you have to have completed um, your... Um, you have to have completed your undergraduate degree. So you can't enter MBBCH, say, from first year or second year in another program. You have to complete that degree. And um, ideally, it should be a, a science-related degree. And then there is the so-called FITS additional placement test or WAP test that you would have to write. And um, if you are invited to write the WAP and you pass it, you then have an opportunity to enter um, the MBBCH3 or Graduate Entry Medical Program. School okay. leavers go straight into um, MBBCH3. So, so the two streams join in, in the, the third year. Okay, okay, thank you for that. Uh, questions around um, COVID-19, will there be any changes? Um, the risks around contracting COVID-19, um, will classes be online next year? What's the plan there? Um, I'll ask the Assistant Dean of the Faculty, Professor Judith Bruce, to please respond to that. Will classes be online? What, are, what changes will there be, if any, around COVID-19? And are there any risks around contracting COVID-19? Hi, thank you, Jerome. Uh, and welcome again to all the participants, and we're delighted to have you online this afternoon. So, yeah, the, the university, as with all other institutions, will be guided by the national regulations and, and the, uh, how the pandemic evolves in order to ensure that its staff and students are, uh, the safety of its staff and students are always the highest priority. And so, the idea of online learning is to protect our staff and students. Uh, one, once the pandemic recedes um, and the national lockdown is completely um, uh, out of off the table, then of course we will consider for students to return to classes. The whole idea is that uh, we will not, or we will continue online learning um, to ensure until it's safe 
for staff and students to return to the classes. So in the Faculty of Health Sciences, um, we do have face-to-face -face contact, but only when it is absolutely essential, for example, in clinical tutorials, uh, we will do that. And as you've heard from Dr. Hartman, the whole idea of online learning is not new. It's not alien to the Faculty of Health Sciences. And so when you come to the faculty, you will be expected to have some of your work online. And we call that a blended learning approach. So it may not be completely online, but there will be some aspects of your learning to be done online. Thank you, Jerome. Do you want me to carry on with the other responses as well? Or yes, please do. Yeah, yeah, please do. So one of the things that, that you, you're asking about um, what's changed with COVID-19, mm -hmm. I mean, one of the biggest indicators are that we, we will not be able to have large classes like we used to. Um, I think COVID-19 will probably be with us, not just this year, but next year, and perhaps even the year later. But it cannot be business as usual. Mm -hmm. And so we students return to classes and face-to-face -face contact is required, we will most likely have to look at more transformative ways of learning and learning that will have to take place in much smaller groups than what we currently used to. Um, you know, and, and wearing of masks and all the other preventative measures around washing hands, sanitizing, maintaining social distancing, distancing that will become the norm for students um, coming back onto campus. And we also have uh, to prepare our students for those changes we have a very well-developed um, COVID-19 handbook, of, which will be made available to our students when they come onto the campus to ensure that you become used to the new normal and make sure that you understand all the precautionary measures to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. The risks of contracting COVID-19, well, uh, the risk, there's sufficient evidence to show that the risk of contracting COVID-19 is highly or strongly correlated with, with risky behavior. And so if students and, and um, staff members on the campus maintain all the precautionary measures, in the first instance, maintain good health, in the second instance, observe all those rules around hand washing, social distancing, wearing your mask, um, and so forth, then the risk will be significantly lowered. Uh, thanks, Jerome. Thank you, Prof, for that comprehensive I'm answer. I'm happy to address any others around that. Well do, well do. Um, then I see this, uh, there's a few pretty, what seems to be pretty straightforward kind of questions coming through. Um, so the faculty registrar, I think, should get us out ready, Sandra Ben. Uh, so the one question is, when will I get a response or an offer from, from the faculty? Can, can you give us a, a sense around that? And then linked to that, I see also a question coming through as to whether health sciences take international students. Um, so Sandra Ben, uh, when will they get a response or an offer and do you take international students? <laughs> Thank you, um, Jerome. I'm busy typing like mad because there's quite a few, quite a few questions which are very similar in, in content to the ones that you've just uh, raised. Uh, when will you get an offer? So as you are aware, the faculty will not be using the MBT scores as part of its calculation um, in 2021. And so we've been very busy um, reformatting the the process that we use to calculate a rating and we will we will probably be launching that next week um, all systems go we've tested and everything seems to be in place and it's gone live and so we're starting to look at um, applicants grade 11 scores now do we take and for your second question do we consider international students um, we do, Jerome. We do uh, consider international students, but one needs to be aware that there are very few places available for international students. Um, the first thing is that for medicine, it's quite difficult to get in as an international student. You, uh, we would consider students coming from SADC regions first, um, and then we will uh, look at other applicants thereafter. Uh, and we do need to just state that um, we have no control over um, applications for internship 
and community service once a degree has been completed and so we limit the number of international students that we take. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you for, for that. Um, a more general question, it seems, um, that are coming through around getting into VETS. Uh, so, Sarona Makwana, the head of our Student Enrollment Center, could you give us a sense around this one? Will grade 11 results prevent a student from getting into VITS? Thank grade you, Jeremy. Hmm. Go for it. Thank you, Jerome. So ideally grade 11 results are used for initial assessment purposes, which means for an example, if an applicant receives a provisional offer based on grade 11 results, that applicant should make sure that he or she maintains the results that she has achieved so that ultimately she can be considered uh, for the firm offer when the official results for grade 12 will be announced uh, in February 2021. So the answer is uh, grade 11 results is actually a vehicle to actually position the applicant uh, in the university to determine the eligibility. So ideally grade 11 results are really considered and applicants are encouraged that they have to perform well and they have to make sure that whatever results that they have attained, they have to make sure that they maintain the standard and even perform uh, higher results so that they stand a better chance when the grade 12 uh, results are announced. Thank you, Jerome. Okay, thank you for that. Um, back to you, Professor Bruce. Um, when will the 2021 academic year start? Um, will it start later? What is the plan? Um, Jerome, judging by the um, ending of the matric exams uh, being 15 of December, it's, it's public knowledge that that will happen. We do anticipate that the matric results will only be released um, probably the third week in February. And given those dates, it will immediately impact on when the university or the faculty starts and we are looking at those starting times and it's very likely that indeed we will have a later start to the year probably around about the first of march but it's not okay. yet confirmed thank you okay thank you prof there's also a couple of questions coming through around residences will they be open next year what can first years expect um, i'll ask the head of residences um, basil mcguena to please come in and just give us a sense of the residences. Will they be open next year? What can first years expect? And thanks very much, Dan. Uh, Bates University remains a contact university such that residences will undoubtedly open next year subject to national regulations in light of uh, COVID-19. In terms of first years, we've got the uh, a residence admission policy that is biased towards first years such that the chances of first years getting admission into our residences are very high. So we look forward to meeting first years next year at that university. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. There are questions around how to fund my studies. Um, uh, who can I approach? Does VITS have bursaries? I ask the team from finance, Mr. Ishmael, Subada, if you could possibly come in to give us a sense um, just around how can students fund their studies. Thank you, Jerome. Um, sorry. Thank you, Jerome. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues and friends. Uh, the funding around, around students. We, uh, we urge students that the NISFLAS applications for 2021 is open. It's open from the 3rd of August and closes on the 30th of November. We also currently uh, ask students to log on to, once they've registered with WITS, to log on to the self-service portal and to, re to register for the discretionary fund. The district discretionary fund helps students to actually register themselves onto a portal and when the donors fund us, and if they meet the criteria for the donor, then they will be eligible for some sort of funding. We also have a platform called Phoenix. The Phoenix platform is a crowdfunding platform in which allows students to actually market themselves onto this platform. And if they find a successful donor, the donor will actually fund their fees. 
We also adverts. We have, if students cannot afford to pay the entire fees, we have the payment plan option, which allows students to actually pay off these fees over a 10 month interest free period. Thank you, Jerome. I hope I've answered the question. Thank, thank you, you for that. Thank you for that. There's also questions around what are the sorts of practicals that are being done? How many academic hospitals does WITS have? Uh, Professor Nsia, uh, head of physiotherapy, could you give us a sense of that? What, are the so what kind of practicals are done? How many academic hospitals do we have? Yeah, thank you, uh, Jerome. In terms of practicals, the practicals we have would have right from the first or second year or basic study, basic year, years of study, would have students in the laboratories as we've seen with the video. So it would be in the laboratories, including simulation laboratories, using simulation men, and even using models. But as the students get equipped with clinical skills, we progress onto the clinical field, where then students would treat real patients. And we pride ourselves in the fact that our students have enough patients to, to see throughout Houten. We also have hospitals in, in, in Limpopo and in Pumalanga, where we send students for clinical training. But the key thing to note is if we talk about the number of hospitals, we have official academic hospitals in Houten. We have big ones like Charlotte Matreke, Barra, and but we also use a lot of hospitals which are not necessarily academic hospitals to accommodate the number of students we have. And as I said, in various provinces, and we don't only use hospitals, we also use clinics, we also use patients. Our students also go to communities to see patients within their homes. So the key thing to note is our training in terms of exposure ranges from being in the laboratory and also being in the hospital using highly specialized equipment and also going into the community using basic equipment. So we can say our graduates, eventually, when, 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 you, when, when you graduate as a vet student, you would be able to cope in an environment where you would be using specialized equipment and you'd also be able to cope in an environment which is uh, resource poor and also urban and rural. And again, as I, I think we need to emphasize that we also pride ourselves in that our students can cope both nationally as well as internationally. So, so, so the training does cover all areas. So I think uh, that I hope it answers the, the questions. Thank you so much for that. Um, there's a question coming through, and I'll go back to you, Sarona, in, in, in sync. If you could just give us a sense, there seems to be a confusion among some of, 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 of our applicants around what is, a, what is a provisional offer, what is a conditional offer, what is a firm offer. That, that has come through more than, than, than one. So could, could you just give us a sense of what's the difference between all of those? Okay, Jeremy. So the difference is, as I already mentioned, currently we are assessing applicants based on grade 11 results. So if an applicant is uh, assessed and uh, that applicant is selected and the applicant is eligible to study that program, so we'll make a provisional offer to that applicant, which means it's a conditional offer because the firm offer, which will be the final one, is determined based on grade 12 results. So ideally it's, we are making provisional offers at the moment based on grade 11 results, because the final offer has to be assessed and determined by grade 12 results. I hope I clarified the difference between provisional or conditional vis-a-vis -vis the final offer, which is a firm offer. Okay. Does it make okay. sense? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it does make sense. Thank you. I hope it makes sense for, for, for our participants too. Um, Raj, could you perhaps give us a sense of the sorts of support that's available or the sorts of services available um, from, from the careers area, from CCDU and so on, and particularly if you can also just the link to, to the support um, at the faculty. Raj, we're not hearing you, <laughs> or at least I'm not hearing you.
Let's just give him half a minute and then we'll continue. Please keep the questions coming in in the chat box. Ah, uh, not in the chat box, sorry. Uh, I don't want to confuse you in the question and answer session. Please, please. Hi, Jer Jerome, can you hear me? Right. We can hear you now. Thank you. Okay, great. Yes, the Counseling and Careers Development Unit does offer a service that helps students to make decisions about uh, the direction of study that they would like to pursue. And uh, the link is very simple. At the moment, because of the social distancing that we're needing to observe, we are asking students to send us an email. And what happens is that the uh, a counselor at the unit will then contact you to see what uh, way, in what way they can uh, best help you. So the email address you need to use is info.ccdu at fits Dot ac dot za. So please do email us. There will be a response to your email, and if necessary, we will be able to arrange an online session to discuss your situation. Okay, great. There are also quite a few questions coming through around sport and involvement in sport and so on. Um, I think Michael is with us. Michael, if you could give us a sense of what the sorts of sports offerings are that's available to students. I don't seem to be finding Michael here. Maybe he didn't hear me. We'll come back um, to that one. Um, but um, Basil, there's also a question around the residences and where first year students are taken. Do you take into account the fact that these are medical students? Can you give us a sense of that? Thanks very much, Dan. We do take that into account. Uh, like I previously pointed out, uh, that we've got a residence admission policy that is more in favor of first year students. Uh, most of our first year students will be placed in residences that are a walking distance from uh, the Faculty of Health Sciences, such that uh, we do uh, make a serious considerations into where we place these students. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Sorry, um, I should have said Nandi for that sports question. So Nandi, if you can please come through on the sports. Good afternoon. Can everyone hear me? Not as loudly as we would like to, but if so, we can just make it a little bit louder. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm Nandi from Bit Sports, and I run the social media and the web pages. I've seen a lot of questions coming in, and I have been trying to keep up. I'm trying to send everybody just a message to let them know. Uh, we've got over 28 sporting codes, and students can participate in. Um, on a competitive or recreational level. We've got quite a number of students that are actually pursuing their postgraduate studies. I got a question around when is the right time to join sports? So I'd say any time, it's all about time management. And we also have a dedicated sports psychologist who is able to assist with planning around um, your career in terms of your academics and sport. So um, we've got a number of athletes that are actually pursuing their postgraduate studies that are actually participating on a high level in terms of um, sports. We've got Chris Humphreys, who's actually doing his um, he's studying towards medicine, and he's part of our Varsity Cup first team setup. We've got Constant Beckerling, who is also doing his master's in um, chemistry as well. So there are quite a number of students that are really um, managing their time well. So it's, it all goes down to how you manage your time in terms of that. And more information is available on the VITSport website. Um, that is vits.ac.za forward slash sports. And we're also active on social media. So if they can also follow at VITSport on Facebook and Twitter and on Instagram, it's at VITSport admin. Okay, thank you for that. I see Professor Bruce, there's a couple of questions coming through around the sorts of support that the faculty offers, academic support and so on. Uh, can, can you give us a sense of that? Professor Bruce, thank you. Sure, Jerome, that's me, I'm here. I was just busy on the chat, my apologies. <laughs> um, yes, the, the faculty uh, prides itself in, in a very highly dedicated uh, unit that provides consistent academic and psychosocial support um, to students who are in need. Uh, we want to make sure that students achieve the success and their potential that they have. 
Uh, and in order to do so, we do provide that support. And so uh, all you need to do is when you join the faculty, there will be pamphlets and leaflets issued to you um, to make sure that you access the support that we have on offer. Thanks, Jerome. Great, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I'm just going through, through the, the, the so many questions here. And so just trying to pick up on more. There's quite a few questions around just medicine and the medical uh, fr from that group of students. And I wonder, Carol Hartman, whether you could pick up on one or two of those and, and, and just respond here. There are questions around will students get paid after community service? There are questions, yeah, there's a host of things coming through. I, I, are you able to respond to one or two of those? Uh, thank you, Jerome. Um, I'm happy to respond to them. I'm afraid I'm, I'm still a little lagging in the questions, so I might not address all of them. So please do <laughs> prompt fine. me if I don't uh, uh, speak to anything. Uh, but maybe the easiest is if I just describe the path to becoming a doctor within South Africa. Um, so within South Africa, you would first do an undergraduate medical uh, degree, which is the Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery. And following this degree, then it's a requirement for the Health Professions Council of South Africa that you complete the internship and community service requirements. So as soon as you have graduated with the MBBCH degree, you are paid and you are working in the healthcare system um, as a doctor, but under very close supervision within the internship and community service years. Um, if you then wish to undergo further specialist training, if you want to become a pediatrician or an obstetrician to deliver babies or a pathologist to investigate disease processes um, or a surgeon, I don't know if I said surgeon. Anyway, if you wanted to enter any of those fields, you would then um, undergo further specialist training while you are working in order to acquire those skills and competencies to uh, be registered as one of those specialist medical degrees. The, have I covered most of them? Yeah, I think, I, I, I think there are very specific questions like the one that just came through that asked around how long does it take to become a plastic trauma or neurosurgeon? Okay. So there are quite a few of those sorts of things. So, so maybe if you can just get up, give us a sense around if someone wanted to specialize. So if you're do? wanting to specialize, so, so your undergraduate uh, medical degree program, as Prof. Balot mentioned, at WITS, you can either enter the MBBCH program from school, which is our school leaver track, and that is a six-year program, or if you've completed a, another degree, you can then enter through the graduate entry medical program at the third year of study, and so then that is a four years of study for the medical program. Um, so it's either a six or a four year, depending on whether you've done a prior degree or not. Your internship at the moment is two years and your community service another one year. So you're looking for at about nine years from leaving school to the point of ending community service. And the majority of specialist training programs after community service um, are around four or five years. Um, they are obviously further training opportunities after that even, uh, which is why medicine is so important to be a lifelong learner. Uh, but a lot depends on when you're able to, to enter those training positions that are available. Okay. So that's, okay. yeah. yeah. So Basil, um, back to you. There are some questions coming through around the residences. Um, is it sharing rooms? Uh, do we, do you, can you eat at the res? How safe is it for, for a student to, to stay in res? Can you just cover that for us? Um, is it sharing rooms? Is food available? How safe is it? Um, and what can people expect from, from the general residence environment? Thanks very much, uh, Jerome. Uh, we've got uh, a combination of uh, room structures which is shared and also single occupancy and also studio units for those students who may be privileged uh, to be in such an environment. Our residences are one of the safest, I mean, uh, in Johannesburg. We've got the uh, security in just about each and every residence. We've got security in the periphery of each and every residence, such that the students uh, uh, should be very free to not knowing that uh, they are safe in our environment. 
And then they can either choose either to be in a catered or self-catering residences. Um, we advise majority of our first years to get into catered residences, those who are able to, because in that environment, you get to focus on your studies while we take care of your needs in terms of meals. Yeah, that is basically it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And then I'm going to go back to, to the Dean of, of, of the faculty. Um, Pravela, there are questions around what are the rules around being a health science student? How strict is it in the faculty? Um, what, what can they expect in terms of just the faculty generally, the rules around being a health sciences faculty and, and, and the faculty set up more broadly? So Jerome, the, the um, expectations is, are that if students are health science professional students, that they um, do follow the um, prescripts of being students within um, a professional environment and particularly a profession in which they are eventually going to be managing patients. So we do mm -hmm. apply a set of rules that are probably slightly more stringent than that is that one would find in the general student population. But the intention also is, is that it's a way of getting students to understand what, what they're going to be doing. And since um, the health professions um, and people who practice in the health professions are essentially built on trust, um, we expect them to be able to follow that and to do so um, in a, in a um, very um, carefully monitored environment. We are not, however, you know, to a point where we, we throw around the big stick we do want students to have a great time at the at the university, and sometimes we know that that means being a little naughty. But it does it does require that we want them to still be um, behaving in a manner that eventually they they're going to be doing well in their professions. Yeah, thank you for that, Prof. And as the dean of the faculty, any closing remarks from your side that that you would like to give to to the applicants? Well, as, as we've done now on more than one occasion, we certainly would firstly wish all um, of those who are about to write matric and lots of good work, luck in that. We know that they are the uh, people who've developed that luck by having, um, you know, have, having um, done the hard work to get there. Um, we also um, recognize that it's a difficult time to do so. so you know, they are going to have, we wish them the fortitude and, and the strength to go through that. And above all, we want to welcome them to WITS next year. Um, great university right. and uh, we will really enjoy having them with us. Yeah. Thank you for that, sir. Well, students, thank you for joining us today. I will now hand over to the head of the Student Liaison Office, uh, Sasha Naika. Uh, to do the to, to the vote of thanks and to just give us a sense of how um, we will proceed from here onwards. Over to you, Sasha. Thanks, Joe. Good afternoon, colleagues, learners, and parents. Please don't panic if any of your questions weren't answered during this online session. The school's liaison office will be following up in these questions, and we will try our level best to get some answers to you post this event. I would like to thank the Vice Chancellor and the Dean for their inspirational words here today. I would also like to thank the faculty for hosting this virtual focus day. Um, to thank the Dean of Students, Jerome September, for hosting uh, or emceeing this event. All the academics and the, uh, for their support and participation, as well as administrative and service departments that have helped put this event together. And with a special thanks to PR and events and the marketing staff. We would like to thank the parents who have encouraged, motivated, and joined their children online here today. But most importantly, we want to thank you, our applicants, and hopefully future VITSEs. We hope that you've enjoyed the, enjoyed the event. Now, before I end, I'm going to digress for a minute, and I'm going to talk about time travel. And I'm going to disagree with our new incoming Vice Chancellor, Prof. Lakazi as he has said that time travel isn't possible. Now I'm heading into dangerous territory right now, and I'm going to do this for you and say that it is possible. But I'm not going to debate Einstein, Newton, or the world of quantum. 
I want you to visualize with me for a minute right now. Six months into the future, you open an email and it says, congratulations, you have been made an offer to come study at WITS in 2021. You start your journey in this brilliant city of gold, the heartbeat of the African continent, with its financial and industrial hub, cutting edge contemporary galleries, urban precincts, funky restaurants, cafes, and art studios. You're sitting in the lecture halls where Nelson Mandela, Robert Subukwe, Patrice Mutsepe, and Tuli Madonsela once sat. You're in the dissection halls where Prof. Philip Tobias and Prof. Sidney Brenner started their medical journeys. You're on the stages where Claire Johnston and Johnny Clegg once honed their musical skills. You're here already on the steps of the famous Great Hall, surrounded by some of the most incredible young minds of your generation, but only because you didn't let this pandemic defeat you. Time travel is possible, and you don't need a time machine either. All you need is hard work, dedication, and perseverance. The future is yours. Make it happen. The University of the Witwatersrand looks forward to welcoming you here next year. Thank you.